in this video you will learn who creates money. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, who creates money? What's a stupid question? The government. It has to be the government who creates money, who prints banknotes, right? Wrong. The truth is, the government creates a tiny, teeny fraction of our money. But the most money is created by banks, by commercial banks and investment banks. And right now, you are probably want to ask, how is it even possible that banks are allowed to create money? That banks, privately owned and profit-driven banks, are allowed to create our money? It's strange, but it's true. And in this video, you will learn how banks do that. But it's not like the government tells the banks, go, create the money. No, the process of money creation is much more subtle and hidden. And in this video, you will learn how banks create money. This is how money creation works. Suppose the reserve ratio is 20% and Jack deposits $100. So Jack brings his money, his $100, into a bank. And this bank is going to take his $100 and divide in two parts. It will reserve 20%. $20 and it will lend the rest. When it happens, money supply, denoted by MS, remember that money supply equals cash plus deposits. So, first of all, Jack brought $100 into a bank. But then look, this bank made the loan to someone. The bank gave this loan to someone else. Someone received $80. So money supply will be 100 plus 80. So this bank made a loan of $80. But look what happened when this bank gave someone $80. $80 loan and someone received that money. Where did $80 come from? Nowhere. This is new money. New money created. Created out of the original deposit of $100. Now both him and him can spend the money. Money supply is $180. But this process doesn't stop. Because the next bank... The bank that will receive this $80, this bank will also split the money. It will reserve 20% and lend the rest. So it will take $80, it will reserve 20% of $80 and lend the rest. So there will be new loan, new loan, new money new money created. The original deposit of $100 will trigger a chain reaction of new loans, new deposits. And we can use a few mathematical tricks to calculate how much money will be created at the end. So we have a sequence 100 plus 80 plus 64 and so on. But let's recall how did we get this $80? $80 was 80% of $100. And how did we get 64? 64 was 80% of 80. But again, $80. How did we get that 80 
dollars, it was 80% of 100. If we plug this into this, we'll get 0.8 times 100. And if we plug this into this into this, we'll get 0.8 squared, because it was repeated two times. 0.8 squared times 100 plus, and you can guess that the next component will be 0.8 to the power of 3 times 100 and so on. And now we have this sequence. And we can do some simple basic math. We can collect the terms 100 times in brackets 1 plus 0.8 plus 0.8 squared plus 0.8 to the power of 3 and so on. And here we need some help. And help comes from mathematics. Mathematics tells us that if you have this series, 1 plus a plus a squared plus a to the power of 3 into infinity, this series equals 1 over 1 minus a if a is between 0 and 1. For example, if you have this series, this series, notice that in this case a is 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 is between 0 and 1, so this result will apply to our series. So it will equal 1 over 1 minus 0 0.1. One. Let's, let's now apply our geometric series to our money creation. Let's put these two results together. This geometric series will equal 100 times 1 over 1 minus 0.8 which equals 100 times 1 over 0.2 equals 500. That's our result. The original deposit of $100 will create the money supply of $500. What we have found is this, this general result. If X is a new deposit, if V is a reserve ratio, then x creates money supply that equals x times 1 over v. In our example, v was 0 0.2 and x was $100. And in our example, money supply equaled x times 1 over V, $500, and we proved it. In macroeconomics, this 1 over V has a special name. It's called money multiplier. And money multiplier shows how much money is created out of $1. In our example, it was 1 over 0 0.25. That was just an example. Does it hold for other deposits? Does it hold for other banks and other economies? Of course it does. It's true for every economy. So what we found is a general result. If we 
generalize our example. We can say that x of the original deposit creates money supply that equals x times 1 over v, where x is the original deposit and v is the reserve ratio. So what exactly so what exactly have we found? We found money supply. Money supply was this sequence. And we reduced this sequence to 100 times 1 over 0 0.2 500. So we found that the original deposit of 100 created money supply of $500. 100 was the original deposit and 400 was new money, new money created in this economy by banks. In other words, we can say that in this economy $1 creates $5. Money creation is like a Russian doll, Matryoshka. Imagine that this is a new deposit and the bank takes a reserve and lends the rest. And the loan will become a deposit at another bank and that bank also take a reserve and lend the rest. And that bank will also take a reserve and lend the rest. And that bank will also take a reserve and lend the rest. How many are they? How many? Last one. Money creation. Money creation is a series of ever decreasing loans. It's a series of ever decreasing deposits. And this is how money creation works. This is how banks create money. So many Matryoshkas.